Anybody who's seen the film The Imitation Game will know the story about how the team at Bletchley Park cracked the three-rotor Enigma code. This example is actually an M4, which has four rotors, which make it more complicated. But before I sort of describe the history of the M4 and its effect on the outcome of the war, maybe we can actually see how this machine practically worked. For the Enigma to work correctly, both the sender and the recipient would have had a similar machine and they would know the setup. So the plug board configuration and the rotors configuration would be known at either end. Um, this is the keyboard, this is the lamps, and this is the set of, uh, a set of rotors. So if I uh, press the letter B, an impulse went through the rotors, hit the reflector, came back through the rotors, and then lit up one of these letters here, and therefore that letter is encrypted. So if I press the B, and it comes up showing N. And as that happens, one, this rotor on the right goes round one click. If I hit B again, it comes up with an, a different encryption from the first B. It comes up this time as an O. Each rotor will rotate by 26 times, and then it'll move on to the next rotor. So it means that it was extremely complicated for anybody to actually um, work out what the message would have actually been uh, stating from both the uh, recipient and from the sender. By the early 1940s, the German Navy had gained an upper hand in the Battle of the Atlantic, and Admiral Donitz, who was the strategist behind this plan, uh, was bringing in his team of U-boats to attack a shipping crossing the Atlantic. Uh, the strategy was a twofold. First, he would send out the U-boats to actually detect the convoys, and once that had happened, that particular U-boat would have contacted all the other U-boats within a 100-mile radius, and then they would have congregated and attacked as a pack. This had devastation effect on the shipping, and in between June 1940 and June 1941, they were losing up to 50 ships and thousands of men and hundreds of thousands of tons of shipping every week. Churchill later stated, Amid the torrent of violent events, one anxiety reigned supreme. Battles might be won or lost, enterprises might be succeed or miscarry. Territories might be gained or quitted, but dominating over all, our power to carry on war or even keep ourselves alive lay in our mastery of the ocean routes and the free approach and the entry to our ports. So without that freedom, quite categorically, the outcome of the war could easily have changed. The easiest way to crack the code for the M4 was to actually get hold of the original code books. Uh, and Ian Fleming, who was then working for Naval Intelligence, and obviously the uh, creator of James Bond, came up with the idea of using one of the captured bombers um, and bringing it down onto the channel quite close to some German shipping, whereby the ship's crew would have come alongside to rescue their colleagues. And um, the plan was then for the British pilots to capture the boat and also capture the code books and then return them to Bletchley. Uh, this never actually worked, and so what they did eventually was um, um, found um, or captured a German weather boat and also another U-boat and took the co-boats from there. These documents gave Bletchley Park the opportunity to actually pinpoint the U-boats and therefore they could divert the convoys around them um, and also gave the initiative for the British destroyers the opportunity to go on the offensive and destroy the U-boats as they were searching for the convoys. Uh, the outcome of this was that uh, um, the, the code or the cracking of the code meant that hundreds of thousands of tonnage were saved, tens of thousands of lives, and uh, had a major impact on the outcome of the Second World War. Um, but they had to be extraordinarily careful because had the German High Command found out that we were reading their messages, uh, obviously they could have adapted their Enigma machines again and, and that would have put Bletchley back to square one. The Enigma M4 was made in much smaller numbers than the more common Army M3 example. Uh, and also, when um, towards the end of the war, when these uh, were either boats were either captured or, or destroyed, um, such machines would have been uh, scuttled or, or just thrown overboard. So it's very rare to find an example in working order in this condition. And it will be included in our sale in New York on the 20th of October conflicts of the 20th century with an estimate of between three and four hundred thousand US dollars.